Okay. Q and A with the uh, foundation board and the staff. So, who's going to open up? Uh, yeah, I have a question about the budget. I noticed we have uh, $700,000 in annual staff expenses, which we're funding with a $500,000 one-time donation and $1.2 million in the bank. Uh, why should our employees not be terrified for their job security? Should I repeat my joke? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I have a one-year contract, so I have a very clear concept of job security. Um, uh, I will perhaps egotistically say uh, that uh, this doesn't keep me up at night per se, but I think it will at some point in time. Um, and I believe part of the reason uh, the job I have was created was to help create that kind of sustainability for the organization in the future. Um, and Neil has been doing obscene amounts of work around fundraising and grant applications and sponsorships. Um, we do have a long-term financial strategy uh, in terms of fundraising, which is around things like uh, building up individual sponsorships, um, building up individual, I call them memberships, but really the Friends of Gnome program. Um, so really like joining that makes a huge difference because the staff is doing uh, an insane amount of work. Um, to support the community and the project. Um, we're looking at, like part of this is sponsorships and then having, finding organizations who would be good fits to join the advisory board. Um, and those are things that, you know, we are looking for ideas. Um, so if you do have ideas on an organization that you think would be a great member of the advisory board or someone who you think would be a great sponsor, either in kind or uh, financial for the foundation, like, please email me. It's mdeblanc at gnome.org. So uh, I wanted to make a question about Gnome Shell. Uh, there have been multiple desktop environments uh, based on Gnome and GTK around that have been uh, made in uh, native languages like Vala, uh, for example, Baji or Elementary, uh, Python, and uh, we've been seeing that uh, lately Gnome has some problems with garbage collection on JavaScript. So I was uh, asked, I'm be, I'll be asking if uh, upon the release of GNOME 4 and GDK 4, uh, if uh, it's considered to be ported to a, to a native language, the, uh, the GNOME shell. I think that, no, I think that's more a question for the maintainers and the developers. So the board usually gets involved more in the strategic direction or the, you know, the finances and, and all of that. So I think the QA is more for that. Or does someone want to answer more? Okay, maybe Emmanuel. No. <laughs> <laughs> so. So more precisely, I'll just expand that slightly for people following along. Long. Um, the heavy lifting in GNOME shell is in C, right? It's, it's not in JavaScript. Um, and if you think that there's memory management problems uh, that don't magically appear in C, you need to look at more C. It's all terrible. So the, the actual issues that we're having is not to do with JavaScript. It's not to do with, with this magic uh, problems over here. Uh, we do have a very flexible method of being able to use the shell, and the extension system simply wouldn't exist with, with, without being able to quickly iterate or things like that. Um, as for GNOME 4 when that comes out, um, well, I think we'll need to wait for some things like GTK 4 and wait for the um, shell maintainers to decide um, what they want to do. And I think as a whole project, we need to kind of work out 
when is it ready to be called GNOME 4? I, I don't think we're going to do a massive, hey, throw it all up in the air and change it all um, type thing. But there could be a, a point at which we feel that this is now a, a, a different thing and a better thing. Um, I'd also like to add, sort of emphasize and maybe reassure that uh, the foundation board does not instruct the uh, maintainers of GNOME modules uh, what technical decisions to make for the project. That's always been the case, and it will continue to be the case. Hi there. Um, I had a provocative question and a non-provocative question. I'll ask, I'll ask you the non-provocative one. Maybe if nobody asks any more, then I'll ask you the other one in a minute. Um, you've mentioned the Friends of GNOME newsletters that are sent out. I was wondering if this is information that could be shared with Foundation members as well. Now, I know you've joked about people donating money to the Foundation before they're allowed to leave this room by the Friends of GNOME program, but people in this room are people that give their time to GNOME, right? So, I usually, I, I don't know about other people here, but I usually give my money to things which I don't give my time to, right? I, I kind of substitute one for the other. Basically, my question is, can we, what information is in those reports? It sounds kind of interesting to me, like information that's going on in the wider project and foundation. Can the foundation at large, members of the foundation, have access to that as a benefit of, a, of kind of achieving foundation membership? Maybe. That's a question. So, it's on the engagement blog, and it's on planet.gnome.org. So I understood that these were secret things. Is that, um, I just had a kind of false understanding of what no, this was. If, if you want it to magically be pushed to you in your inbox, um, then you'll need to sign up. But they are on the engagement blog. It's on Planet. Okay, I'm uh, sorry. I, thought, I, I got the impression that this was kind of like a benefit that you were giving people for being friends of GNOME. That's not, that's I, not what it is? Well, not yet. <laughs> if you read it on the engagement blog, there's a little thing at the end that asks you to become a friend of GNOME. And if you get it in your inbox, it does not ask you to become a friend of GNOME. <laughs> It thanks you for being one. Yeah, I kind of a follow up to that, but um, I, I, I was surprised by how many names I recognized on the list of Friends of Gnome. Um, and I wonder what, what we can do to on the one hand, the kind of the Friends of GNOME program is probably unlikely to uh, match up to some of the larger corporate donations uh, to the GNOME Foundation, but I think it, help, it might help to give a sense of ownership um, to users of GNOME. Um, ownership may be the wrong words, but yeah, the contribution, right? If for folks who can't uh, can't or can't or won't donate their time and other skills, but do have um, do have some spare money that they could donate to the cause. Um, what, what can we do to reach um, GNOME users who are not interested in becoming part of the GNOME community um, and encourage them to join the Friends of GNOME program? Well, it hurts my voice by the end of the day. Um, so, to briefly discuss some of the tactics um, that we have planned. Um, one of them is always to reach out to the community that's already there uh, and to ask them to get involved, to spread the good word, um, to help us uh, because the, you know, it's not so much that the foundation, that the community is here to serve the foundation, the foundation is here to serve the community. Um, and it's our job to support, like, to uplift everyone else in this room. Um, so your help is something that's very generous that you give not just to the project, but when you help the foundation, that's like going above and beyond in its own way. Um, beyond that, we're planning a membership drive, uh, which we'll be doing hopefully soon uh, in the future. Um, and when that happens, we'll be doing different kinds of outreach. We'll be doing kinds of marketing um, to boost our profile, specifically uh, the profile among the Friends of GNOME program. Um, we uh, have been going to more events and conferences, um, and we talk about it there. Um, it's going to be appearing in more of our marketing materials. Um, if you have ideas, those are great, and we would love to hear from you. Hi. 
Hi. Um, you might have noticed last year also around Christmas time uh, on the social media accounts, we ran a three week long donation uh, drive, donation sprint uh, of sorts. Um, I don't love to make the social media accounts just asking for, for donations constantly. I would like the social medias to be a lot about content and a lot about wholesome news. Um, but around Christmas time this year, I, I do have plans again to try to ramp up close to that holiday season um, the donation requests and uh, the request to share the holiday spirit by becoming a friend of Gnome and all those sorts of things. Um, right now, we are sitting at 135,000 Twitter followers, so that reach is fairly prominent. Um, Facebook is uh, ni 90 plus thousand on Facebook. So um, using both of those as a tool is at least my personal plan. Hello. Um, yeah. Back in the day, OpenSUSE, when it started as an independent project, based almost all of its governance on the GNOME project. And now, you know, OpenSUSE is currently looking at forming a foundation, and I'm seeing all of the work that GNOME is doing here with, you know, the, uh, you know your new policies and procedures and, and add, you know, adding sort of extra layers of your governance and the legal st stuff. How much of that are you going to be sort of documenting what you're doing, why you did it, the decisions made? Because I think for projects like OpenSUSE, we would love to emulate, copy, and follow in your footsteps as much as possible. Because you're solving problems that other projects are going to have to solve on their own otherwise. I kind of feel like there's a sort of common established wisdom amongst um, lawyers who give their time uh, pro bono and serve for nonprofits that support and are fiscal sponsors for open source projects. Uh, and the general recommendation is don't make a foundation find one of the many very well run and very well resourced foundations that have experts that can do this for you. Um, in a sense, the GNOME Foundation, given things like uh, the OSI, the Free Software Foundation, uh, Conservancy, those organiza organizations exist, they're well resourced and well run. We probably wouldn't need to start the GNOME Foundation today, given that landscape. So that's, you know, I, I always counsel people to look at possible fits with existing things because there's an efficiency of scale, of process, of experience and advice and infrastructure that those organizations can give you. The policies that we do have, most of them are just public on the wiki. I mean, the, the, the spending authorizations, the budgets, the, um, what's the other one we've got? Travel, uh, that, that's, that's all just there, you know, wiki.gnome.org forward slash foundation. Um, but there's not, there's not masses and masses and amounts of stuff. Uh, the other thing is we, we do borrow heavily from some of those other organizations. So like the, the tra style, travel policy is borrowed from the um, Software Freedom Conservancy, which is very useful. And we try to work with them on shared tooling and infrastructure wherever we can. I think that's right, Neil. Yeah. Hi, so um, I saw that there was mentioned in terms of the agenda for the following year about the environmental impact um, based on uh, Philip's talk. Um, given uh, the outcome of the talk, which was effectively that we could probably have the most impact by uh, improving, uh, as in decreasing uh, the power usage of GNOME as a whole, uh, can we have a hack fest this year and can Philip organize it? Yes, but only if you attend by train. <laughs> uh, on that note, if you look at the most recent release of SysProf and you install on Fedora, it's called Kernel Tools. Uh, it might be a separate uh, package on other distributions. Uh, there's a program called TurboStat. And TurboStat will print out the uh, they're called MSRs out of your CPU to give you an estimation of how much power consumption you're using. So if you use the newest version of SysProf that'll be out as part of 3.34, check the box for energy usage and we'll tell you exactly what part is using how much power. So you can run a multiple uh, times your program or system you want to profile and we can tell you whether or not you're wasting power in the GPU or in particular CPU packages. So 
Uh, I do agree this is super important, and I think now we're getting to the point where we have the tooling for people to, uh, developers to help optimize their own power consumption. Uh, one other point on that, um, we have, like, the board uses GitLab, like um, a lot of other teams, and most of our issues are public, and we have a work queue. We have, you know, there's a Kanban board, so you can see what we've got in the queue, what's coming up next. This issue is one of those issues. It's a public issue. Anyone can comment on it. And we're really keen um, to break down some of those barriers between the board and the rest of the community. So if you have specific ideas or opinions on this, there is absolutely nothing to stop you from you know, commenting on that issue, subscribing to that issue, and getting involved. And this doesn't have to be something that is purely owned by the board, although, you know, we recognize that our role is to move forward with issues that are brought to us by the community. And no, it doesn't have to be just us working in a silo. Like, it's, it's, it's right there if anyone wants to participate. Uh, hi. My question is, uh, as, of, as of today, as of right now, what does the E in Guadex stand for? Everywhere. How will how will we see that uh, play out? Uh, so we have had our call for bids uh, for Guadex, and our expressions of interest have been for Riga uh, in Latvia and Zacatecas in Mexico. Um, I think one of the important things is that we do. Uh, and this, I've talked to Philip about this, this does slightly go against the whole making uh, GNOME as a project and a foundation more environmentally sustainable. But I think it's really important that actually, for our main conference, we take it to places that isn't traditionally served well by free software. So outside of North America, outside of Europe, and into places where free software can have a really big impact. Um, so we're looking at sort of expanding um, where potential locations where um, Guadec can be and not necessarily just sort of sticking to Europe. It is essentially our global conference. Sorry? <laughs> the, those are the places we've had bids from. So, hey, it's, it's, it's slightly, slightly larger, but I know we've had um, interest from other places as well, so, so in Africa, in South America. So there is hopefully a, going to be a, a range there. Hi. Um. I was just wondering, does the GNOME outreach team do much work with universities at all? Or is there any like, plans in place to do like workshops or introductions to GNOME at universities? So, in a nutshell, um, it's something that we, it comes up a lot. There's a lot of interest in the engagement team to go to universities and to do public outreach. Um, there is a, a not fully planned out um, idea in mind right now to have uh, like a university, um, what's the word, university advocacy, like uh, GitHub has something like this where GitHub puts uh, people in power at various universities to kind of spread the word of Git and get people using Git. For them, it's clearly to use GitHub. For us, it'd be a little more... Um, altruistic uh, but yeah so nothing uh, nothing on the books as of right now but yes in general that is something we want to do it's just logistically a lot of work to work with universities yeah So on that note, um, regarding it is hard to get to universities and work together with them, but what if a professor or somebody in a university would like to just introduce uh, GNOME to, to like people, like a group or something like that, make, make their own um, small hack fest or something like that in a university? Do you have material, videos, stuff like that where, where people can just 
like get into into that topic and then um I turned I turned okay. um so yes, in general, um, part of the engagement team's budget every year, we budget uh, resources for organizations around the world, local Linux user groups, or even um, universities, classrooms, to be able to request uh, GNOME resources, GNOME stickers, flags, uh, any number of things. We'd love to increase the variety of things that you can request. Um, but in general, yeah, that is one of the things we bake into our budget, is the ability to send associated groups and groups that want to spread the good word uh, resources to help them do so. Um, it, yeah, does that answer your yeah. So we also have the newcomers initiative. So that's kind of um, an initiative to make sure that people that are new to GNOME knows how to contribute, they have an easy path uh, towards contributing for, for coding. And we have wikis for that, we have enough materials there. And recently I think there is a video as well for, of me <laughs> making an e-commerce workshop. So that might be useful as well for, for universities to you know, introduce um, the students on, on contributing to know. I think this has to be our last question. We have 10 minutes for a couple of last things. Okay, so. just a follow up on the newcomers thing. Sure. We're going to have a newcomers workshop uh, in the both days. And if you want to tag along to learn how to do the newcomers workshop and reproduce in our local community, we've been doing this in our university in Brno, and you are welcome to, to join to doing other universities. So, um, thank you, everyone, for your questions. Um, I am pleased to announce that. Uh, both of our motions have passed to amend the bylaws. Um, so. For the move to gender neutral terms, we have 30, uh, 73 votes for yes and two no votes. Um, and for the amendments to the board terms, we have 69 votes for yes, five votes for no, and one abstention. I think we have a raffle prize to award. Yes. <laughs> okay, so it's being a little bit impromptu because I know that there was a few numbers, but I have the numbers and I'm going to ask them. Yeah. Hold on, Ruti. Start over with the mic. Okay. Yeah. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> okay. Shree, come on up. Oh, and I need the prizes. Hold on. Okay. So. Can someone please, Christy, do you mind getting the prizes? They're back there. They're three bags. Okay. So the way that this is going to work, or the way that the bingo worked, first of all, the reason we had a bingo <laughs> is to encourage people to get along. Um, Chris, there's one more back there. Um, yeah. To encourage people to talk to each other and to ask questions that they might normally not ask each other, like, what's your birthday? <laughs> and are you an eldest child? And things that are just like icebreakers to help you get to know people that you might not have gotten to know otherwise. Um, so, in order to reward you for that awesome, you know, good newcomer and oldcomer behavior, um, we wanted to have some prizes for you all. Um, the way this works is we're going to have them just gift wrapped up here and you get to choose whatever strikes your fancy if your name is called. And people received a certain number of raffle tickets for the amount of completedness of their bingo sheets. Um, so again, that's on my computer here and everyone has specific numbers linked to their name. Lots of prizes, so lots of winners. And Shri is going to generate random numbers using his application that we just downloaded two minutes ago. <laughs> so. Okay, 
So first one, tree. Oh, sorry, and the numbers are one through 190, oh, in case that matters. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bear with us. <laughs> 54. Okay, 54 belongs to Ken Van Dyne. <laughs> oh my god, yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know, I have nothing to do with um, Just really quickly, <laughs> these two are over 18. <laughs> and those, so, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm definitely not. All right. Uh, we got two minutes. So Next one. Go, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no clapping between 25. each one. Okay, 25 is Antonio Fernandez. <laughs> 189. 189. 189 is Janis. Go ahead, pick one. <laughs> Janis Constantinidis. 146. 136? 146. 146. Jonathan King. Is he here? You must be present to win. That's for, that's more adult kids? He's here. Oh. <laughs> that is for 21 and above. All right. Okay. Okay. Now go ahead. Um, 10. 10. Uh, is Julita. <laughs> Ninety-five. Ninety-five. Stella Maris. Is she here? Yeah. Eighty-two. Eighty-two. Sigu. <laughs> hey, what's going on here? <laughs> One seventy-one. Jonathan Blanford. <laughs> <laughs> and we have. One left. Seven. Forty? Seven. Oh, which one? Seven. Seven. Okay, that's Julita again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you all for playing. <laughs> oh, The last agenda item for the AGM, um, this is a now very long-standing and established Guadec um, tradition um, that we award a, a prize, the uh, Gnome Pants of Thanks, um, which for British English speakers we are talking trousers. Um, the history is probably 15 years ago in Guadec, maybe something like this, uh, which was in Spain, um, and Jeff War, the then release manager for Gnome, um, who took us out the door for Gnome 2.0. Um, professed no knowledge of Spanish, um, and his only Spanish was Donde este mes pantalones, um, which he just said randomly throughout the week um, until somebody answered the question and actually found a pair of trousers that had been left on the street somewhere. Um, which, of course, what you do when you define, find uh, discarded trousers is to give them to somebody as a show of gratitude. Um, <laughs> so, um, we actually now have switched over to uh, a, a fresh pair of trousers each year, um, but the tradition continues um, that uh, somebody with uh, outstanding contributions to the GNOME project, um, to our community, to the things that we build and the people who build them, um, somebody who has done huge amounts of work to support what it is that we try and achieve as a project, um, their contributions are recognized. Um, the board has uh, asked for nominations from the community. Um, we've had some, uh, some great nominations this year, um, both from uh, long-standing uh, contributors and relative newcomers. Um, in fact, we also discussed whether we should switch to having two awards, um, some pants for uh, long-term uh, contributors and shorts for newcomers. Um, so <laughs> we'll, we'll think about that. Um, we're we're just, doing, just doing the pants this year. Um, so um, these are quotes from the nominations. Um, we actually had a lot of uh, correlations. We had the multiple nominations for the same people. Um, so this individual um, is calm, humble, and always ready to lend a patient ear to any problem that comes their way. Um, they've contributed not only in code, um, but they have mentored newcomers and taken part mentoring students in Summer of Code and Outreachy. Um, they've been a cherished member of our community for almost 15 years. And they've made significant contributions and take care of the maintenance of many projects, uh, GTK, Tracker, Mutter, Shell, and more. 
and the individual is Carlos Garnacho. Much. This is overwhelming. So, but uh, I, at the same time, think it's kind of unfair, as in there's so many people who deserve this, and you all do an incredible job, really. So, thanks to all of you as well, because I wouldn't be here without you, really. So, thanks so much. Let's just leave now. <laughs> <laughs>